that gives me really good <laughs> Kind of on the edge about making this video but i ran out of ideas and you know uh, it, it is good stuff but basically what i want to do is break down some traditional kung fu forms and see their application i why i was on the edge about this um for a couple reasons one i think it's a little overdone uh i didn't want to seem like i was forcing these to work because my personal philosophy is if it works use it if it doesn't throw it out um, however I do think that there are some good stuff to learn from this like um, how in kickboxing I'll use stuff from boxing I don't take boxing but I will use boxing concepts and the like uh, same with some traditional martial arts like I might not use a lot of it when I'm fighting but I can still take ideas and concepts and moves from it. Uh, and, but I do believe, like, like, oh, this form works like this is used a lot to justify the forms as effective. Um, when I believe that there's more effective ways of fighting. I'm, I know I'm rambling, but I didn't want to get that out of the way. And, you know, I also don't think that they should just be thrown out, too. Um, so I do believe that there's good stuff to learn from it. Uh, anyway, I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. All right, so um, where I train, we have five animal styles. Uh, tiger, snake, crane, leopard, and dragon. Uh, I'm going to show one technique or a couple techniques from each of those and kind of explain... Uh, the animal style and the application of the move and if it does and if this video does good then I'll do I can do more in depth on each of the styles or if I run out of ideas again then I'll do more in depth on each of the styles but here we go so first is tiger tiger is very rooted and strong it's a um, the tiger form we do is the first one we learn uh, it's very on the surface like what you see is what you get you have uh, lots of pushes grab rakes you know you have a lot of eye gouges uh, pushes rakes a lot of strong strikes so let's see uh, come on up all right so a good application of that is going to be this more general application of the style instead of a singular move so a big thing in tiger is the is grab and push so what i'm going to do is basically grab um use my fingers to basically rake off his face and then push with that i can then again grab and you see that a lot in the tiger style we do um, all right, so another good one is, say he's grabbing me or something. I'm going to grab, punch, and then from here I'm going to grab and throw him down. Let me move out so you can see that better. What I'm going to do is I'm in the form. How it starts is I just did a double box. Back fist, step around, rake, push, toe kick, grab, throw down. The application of that is gonna be, I just did my stuff over here. He's coming up on me, either punching or grabbing, that just makes it easier. When I come around the rake, I'm gonna grab and push. Uh, the kick's too awkward to do for this application, so I'm just gonna keep grabbing and throw down. Um, whatever throw down it goes into. So let's do that again. He's going to punch, the grab, rake, throw down. Uh, 
And that's a good one because it teaches control. You're grabbing, throwing down. Um, has some, I, I'll, I can break it down later, but it has some good techniques to it. All right, now for a snake. Um, that's the second style we do. It's a little more, there's, uh, snakes are a lot, very deceptive. So I'm gonna have my hands up here. You think I'm gonna attack with this hand, my other hand switches underneath. Also, you think you're focused on my hands up here, but really it's my elbow doing a lot of the attacks and strikes. For example, come here. Like a big thing is, you know, you, you think that this move is done with my hand, with, when in reality, it's done with my elbow. What my elbow is doing here is it's gonna come up. Basically, this hand's holding his hand on here. My elbow's gonna come up, break down his elbow, and come up through. That gives me really good, <laughs> that gives me good control of him. I can push him into whatever I want to. Uh, that's seen several other places like that, or even, yeah, I can come from the other way, break down his elbow into some good arm bars and stuff. I like that. Um, probably the good, I kind of use these concepts a lot in actual fighting, uh, not the specific techniques, but like say we're clinched up, um, fighting elbows a lot, you know, instead of just uh, focusing on my where my hands are, I want to, I can fight elbows, like he's trying to get to the inside, I'm using my elbows to work in um, that elbow thing. A fun move, besides that, actually, the move I just showed is probably the funnest one, here's one. So, um, how it's going to or because I just came from another move here, move, move out of the way. I just came from another move here. My hands are going to come up, come through my chamber, double spear hand, come out, arm bar, brush, a uh, clap. That's going to be the how it looks in the form. So come here. Uh, how that would be applied is I'm going to come through chamber into his eyes. My hands continue through past his eyes. My elbows are going to come up and around here, basically underneath his arms. I have control of him. So, hands up. I'm not going to do the entire movement, but basically I'm just coming up into his eyes, elbows wrap up. Just like that. Um, frankly, I'm not a fan of the double arm bar but it does give you control and again you know the elbow stuff is really good for that next is going to be crane um crane where tiger is a lot at the hands snake is a lot of the elbows crane seems to be a lot at the shoulders very big movements like that um, come here. You're gonna have a lot of stuff. Like you, you, you see this one a lot, like in Tiger with the rake push. You see this a lot in Crane. Hook, palm. I'm pulling him towards me as I push. Has a lot of that symmetry to it, pulling and pushing at the same time. Uh, a good move of that. Let's see. Is he just gonna come in with a? Punch. I'm gonna hook, do it. My crane hand or whatever. I'm gonna hook, temple strike here. He's gonna come in the other side. I'm gonna hook, temple strike. You're gonna come in with the same arm. I'm gonna overhand trap, temple strike. He's gonna come with this arm. I'm gonna overhand trap, temple strike. Um, it's a lot of. Feels a lot like snake there. Come here. I'm not gonna hurt you. Why well, you look so scared? You come with this arm. I'm gonna hook, push it out of the way, push, pull. This pull emotion is what brings the other hand around. He's gonna come with the other hand. Hook, pull as I pull him. That's gonna pull my other hand around. 
Um, he's gonna come in with his arm again. I'm gonna hook, overhand, pull. I'm just gonna pull this hand around into that temple strike. This hand here, hook, pull around into that temple strike. Uh, I like that, kind of the dichotomy of it, the pulling and pushing that can be used a lot. You know, say you're grappling, I'm gonna pull, push. You know, say I wanna set him up for a good single leg. He's not on the right side. I can pull, push. He's not doing it, whatever. I'm just gonna pull until he gives me that leg. So I can do that. Um, you good? Yeah. Well. So that's good. Uh, with those temple strikes, my opinion on, on hand strikes like in snake, the snake strike, and crane, the temple strikes, uh, my opinion on those is I think they can be really effective if you train for them. Like, uh, these videos of Shaolin monks will pop up on my feed, like them busting up open coconuts with just their finger. If you train for that, I think it could be really effective. However, in modern society, we use our hands a lot, like for keyboards or other stuff like keyboards, um, where you know you need that dexterity and you can't just spend your whole life dedicated to destroying your finger so you can get a good snake strike or temple strike. Um, but anyway, on to leopard. Let's see. Uh, leopard, it's kind of very aggressive. Feels a lot, it feels a lot like Muay Thai. You know, you have a lot of um, kicks, hops, spinning kicks, stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to think of an application for that because there's a lot of kicks and I don't want to hurt him. So let's see. But anyway, you know. Come on. Leopard is going to be pretty aggressive. Like you're going to have a lot of strikes. It's like that silver bullet strike from Karate Kid. But that's how your fingers are. You're going to have a lot of strikes, toe kicks, spinning kicks. Stuff like that. And then, oh, he, here's a good one. So, it's a takedown. Take off your shoes. So basically what I'm gonna do here is in the form, move out of the way, is you just finish a set of kicks. I believe it's toe kick. Get them off, I've done that, and then you come here, I'm gonna rake, do a roll, you okay? So basically, uh, what I'm gonna do, come here, get closer. So I just struck him, I'm gonna rake his legs, roll, and I'm gonna stick my foot up like an axe kick, bringing him along with me. It's awkward, but that's it. I've never actually tried that one before, so we'll see how it looks on camera. But yeah, you know, Leopard's pretty aggressive. I really like it, it has a lot of over strikes like that feels a lot like very Muay Thai ish uh, honestly I guess I do use a lot of that in kickboxing but it's like do I use leopard or is leopard just use the stuff that I use anyway that's a whole other video now for dragon dragon it's very strong and very momentum oriented. So you'll see a lot, it feels, it feels a lot different than the other forms. Like dragon, you know, 
you come with these big movements, you're traveling a lot, really focusing on that momentum to drive you through all the movements. So honestly, that's one thing that uh, I really like about it is just kind of that momentum, like very fluid, one movement uh, automatically leads into the next. Um, so it's more the concept that could be applied, I believe. And just the moving, like just that powering through each move, um, letting your momentum go, um, letting your momentum show you where to go. Let me. Uh, yeah, so really with Dragon, you're gonna have a lot of that momentum stuff. Like each movement automatically pulls into the next. And then it's one of the funner ones to do. Funner. It, it's, it's one of the a more enjoyable ones to do. Um, but again, the concept is more what be applied. Uh, and you know, you can kind of see the breakdown of the you know, surface level um, beginner forms to the more advanced uh, forms at the end, like dragon as opposed to tiger. Um, but you know, maybe I'll think of something later and put it in, but I don't really want to hurt my little brother and doing movements like this. I, I believe this is a grab down. Ah, come here. Let's see. How would I do that? So he's punching. Grab. Let's see. Grab. Come down like that. Ooh, that's a good one. You're going to punch. No, grab. Pull up. Up. Let me, let me do the move real quick. Come here. Grab. I'm gonna grab, pull up. Come down. That's a fun one. I can't really complete it because I feel like yeah, I should be breaking his arm or shoulder. Yeah. Come here again, actually. Pull up. Well, I guess it could be like, uh, no, that's not it. Come here. Basically, the move I was trying to do is come up. Yeah, come up. I'm gonna strike you, and then strike you, pull you down into a strike or something. Again, it's it's hard to apply a lot of these strikes. Um. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, uh, you know, make sure to interact with the video. That'll really help the algorithm. Uh, let it know that, you know, it's a good video. And if this does good, I'll make sure to get some more out. Uh, but honestly, I was kind of on the edge about making this. Because what you see a lot is they're about, if I'm counting right, there's like five stages of a traditional martial artist learning to fight. The first stage is complete ignorance. I was there for a while. It's, you know, you're like, oh, you know, you're doing the forms. Like, oh, this must be what there is. This is it. You know, um, you, know you don't know what's out there. And then I believe the second stage would be denial. You know, like, you see somebody fighting or, you know, you have a, harder sparring match of yourself um yourself or he, you either see somebody fighting or have a harder sparring match yourself You're like oh you know what i'm doing is not what i need to train for this that's actually where a lot of people get stuck i believe at that um denial stage and we'll actually make videos like this showing why their forms that they do work um, in an actual fight. Um, the only difference would be um, 
they'd say that's all you need to train. Uh, I believe train whatever you enjoy. Be honest with your training. You know, like say you really enjoy doing forms. That is amazing. Uh, be honest with yourself. You know, don't be like, oh, I could beat up um, a world-class fighter. No. Um, that person is somebody who trains specifically for that. Just like, you know, they could not do your forms. It's, think of it like a completely different sport. So anyway, way back to the uh, list. There's um, ignorance, denial, and then I don't have a name for this one. But it's basically where you see people um, start to actually train to fight and pressure test, but they exclusively use their own style. Like, you actually see this a lot in Wing Chun. People be like, oh, Wing Chun this, Wing Chun that. Yeah, you know, there, there's good stuff in Wing Chun, but it's not, um, it's not all that. But anyway, so you'll see that a lot like, oh, you know, I'm using my style. My style is good for fighting because we do it like this. Like, okay, yeah, you know, that can be good for fighting, but are you bringing in other um, styles? Are you bringing in other situations to really test, to, you know, to really test and modify your style? You know, you don't want to leave it as is. You know, you want to, if it works, use it. If it doesn't work, don't use it. So there's the ignorance, denial, let's call that supplementation, number three. And four is complete rejection. Um, it's basically not, It's basically anything traditional does not work. Um, if it's, oh, that's traditional, it's bad. It doesn't work at all. And this is actually where you see a lot of people get stuck. And they think it's the end. Like, oh, you know, I have come out of this. I have seen, you know, that traditional martial arts are all bad. It's the old way. Um, I pressure test everything I do. I train hard. Um, use what works. Don't use what doesn't work. And traditional martial arts doesn't work. So I'm not going to use any of that. Um... It honestly seems kind of like an anger against it. You know, and I, I can get, get where that's coming from. You know, you especially coming all the way up those steps. It's like, oh, you know, what I have been told works doesn't work. I'm a, you know, it, it can hurt your ego. And uh, basically, anyway, uh, I've probably made a lot of people mad saying that, but, and then number five is basically, uh, maybe apathy, if that's the right word I'm thinking of, but it's basically, you know, the number four stage without the anger against traditional martial arts. It's okay. I'm going to use what works. I'm going to use what does. I'm going to do what I enjoy. Um, you know, if, if this concept from this Kung Fu form works, that's amazing. I'm going to try and incorporate that in. If it, if, if I, if I can't incorporate it, great. If I can't, you know, if it doesn't work, I'm never going to use it again. Um, so, you know, and also like that same person, but, oh, you know, I enjoy, like for me, I enjoy doing forms and practicing the traditional martial arts. Um, you know, I'm going to be realistic with, uh, what it does for me, um, and what it can do. So anyway, let's see how many people I made mad with that and any angry comments, please leave them because it will help the algorithm. All right. Uh, thank you for watching and bye.